Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here and you just found me. My name is Maria and this year I want to incorporate more content so that I can connect more personally with you. That I'm really interested in like spirituality and maybe even meditation and yoga. And of course, if you're following me for my poetry, I'm still gonna post poetry every Monday, so you can skip this video and don't worry about that. <laughs> um, so I thought I should start sharing with you my experience with my spiritual awakening. I realize it's a strange topic, so of course, as I mentioned, if you're following me for my writing and my poetry, you can skip this video, it doesn't matter, you don't have to unsubscribe, you can just, you know, ignore that this video is here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would like to include more, like a different kind of content every Thursday, while still keeping it with poetry every Monday, so here I go. My spiritual awakening experience. Um, I don't know how it is for other people. I actually haven't researched to see what other people's experience with this has been like, if it has been as difficult as mine was, or if it was more blissful, you know, reaching a sort of understanding. In my case, it all began one night in 2013. Um, and I feel like this had been coming on gradually because around that time I was writing a song that sort of had you know, the vibe of the thoughts that I started having when this all <laughs> started taking place inside my, my mind. Um, and this song that I'm talking about, I might actually release it either this year or next year. So if you're interested in that, you could check out my other channel and subscribe. Um, the song is called Waiting for the Dawn. I feel like the themes in that song really had to do with, you know, what subconsciously was brewing in my, in my mind. And one night in 2013, I just woke up and, you know, I was struggling to sleep, actually. I was struggling to sleep because my mind kept racing, questioning, asking questions and wondering about my life. And I think the trigger was, you know, a combination of things, starting with the fact that my life had changed dramatically around those days. We had to move out of the house that we had around that time, which was actually this house that I'm sitting in right now. We, we lost that house because my parents separated and I was 23 years old, so, you know, I wasn't a child, but <laughs> I lived here with my mom and dad. And everything changed because we went from living in this place to living in a really tiny apartment on the second floor of my grandparents. And back then, I feel like I lived in La La Land. <laughs> You know, I I wasn't a rich kid, but my I feel like obviously we weren't like wealthy people, but we did have but we did have like more money than we ended up having after we moved out. The lifestyle that we had changed dramatically and also the privacy that we had because now we lived in the second floor of my grandparents. You know, it, it wasn't the same thing. I also had dropped out of university for the second time. Well, I'm gonna talk about my tumultuous university experience in another video. I had quit university again. I was directionless except for the fact that I've always wanted to be a writer and a musician. And that was all that was in my head. But as I said, I lived in La La Land before I got this reality check. When we moved out of this big house and suddenly everything was different. And I feel like all of that triggered what I would later come to call my spiritual awakening because there were so many things and worries in my head. Most of the time I was alone upstairs because, you know, I had dropped out of college, but my mom, had, uh, my mom was working and my sisters were going to college. So 
We live in Puerto Rico, so when you go to university, usually you don't stay uh, at a dorm. I think if you have, if you want to stay near the university, you can rent. But there's no such thing as like you know houses within the campus, like in the U.S. I guess just for context, I'm mentioning this. So my sisters will go to college every day, and my mom would go to her job and I would stay there alone with my thoughts and my thoughts were really really messy back then and I started questioning about life and about my place in life and like what was going to happen with me I don't know how it started but as I mentioned um, I was writing a song those days that really had to do with this topic about what happens when I'm gone you know when you pass away, what happens with, with your mind, with the contents of your mind? Because I don't know how this happens, but I stopped identifying my body with, with my human essence, I guess. And <laughs> that night in 2013, I just woke up after having been struggling to sleep. I feel like I managed to go to sleep, but suddenly I woke up and I was breathless and I had this overwhelming fear like what's gonna happen with me you know I suddenly realized it was like a like a poof in my mind like I'm in this body but I'm not this body like I felt like I need to get out of this body and I even kicked my legs in the air and everything you know I was you know feeling like this is I'm caged in this and I am not this but I'm caged in this and I, and I can't escape this body until I eventually pass away. This kick started a very violent and intense train of thoughts about what's gonna happen to me when I'm gone. What's gonna happen to, to this? You know, because your body rots away, but what happens with the contents of your mind, with your memories, with everything you have learned? throughout your life, you know, like, what happens with that? I started thinking, how is it that everything in creation is so perfect? You know, even if you don't believe in creation as in a spiritual context, you can argue that even if the Big Bang was an, uh, an arbitrary thing that happened, everything in creation, even within the, the balance of chaos and peace, it's kind of perfect and everything fits in perfectly even forest fires are necessary for the continuation of the forest there are seeds that need to sprout after they've been you know hit by these fires and everything even floods are necessary and we're not gonna talk about chaos in this video but um what i mean is that i was thinking in this world where everything is so perfect basically in in the balance of life how would this world sprout a creature, you know, human beings that are capable of awareness and, you know, we are conscious creatures, we have intelligence, we can create art, um, we can do so many things. How is it that this world, this universe would, would spawn this creature? that is aware of the fact that they're going to be the contents of their mind is going to be destroyed once they they die so yes i guess i was thinking that and i just one afternoon i just started crying and the crying it just never stopped until i i came out the other side of this i was crying every single day i couldn't sleep i couldn't eat i would eat very little food i lost a lot of weight and i remember i was only being capable of eating soft foods because i wasn't being able to swallow food i was in this in this um i guess extremely overstimulated state of anxiety and overwhelming fear and sadness it was i was devastated you know like as a person i was devastated it's like suddenly i had nothing except for the thought that my mind might dissolve one day alongside my body and i just couldn't fathom how that could possibly be true you know how that could possibly actually happen and 
and I think this went on for days. Actually, even my older sister had to stay home with me. She had to take some time off university because I couldn't be left alone. I'm telling you that I was, when I'm saying that I was crying 24 seven, I mean that I was crying 24 seven. I, it was a nonstop crying. And there were moments when I was just weeping, you know, loudly and it was just, I was completely, completely destroyed as a person. I even considered just going to, to a hospital because it was completely overwhelming. But what actually helped me was examining, you know, what truly is going on with, with being human, actually. I started thinking about the reality of the soul, the reality of the spirit. How, how can consciousness be produced by the brain? Or, you know, I started re researching about consciousness, reading about it, and also like thinking, I was thinking so much about it that I even reached my own conclusions. And that's really what started, what started, you know, my healing and my coming out of this and basically what I call my spiritual awakening. Um, this whole process was my spiritual awakening. Um, oh, I remember there was a day that my sisters, my, my older sister took me out with my younger sister and her, like all of us, all the sisters, we went together with my then older sister's boyfriend and we went to eat at a restaurant. He invited us and that was like the only night when I truly felt at peace within that whole uh, storm that I was going through, you know? That was a moment of calm within the tempest that was my, my spiritual awakening. And I remember looking out the window and thinking to myself, you know, this can't be everything that there is. There has got to be more. There has got to be something Like, we cannot be this body alone. And I just feel like my body is not who I am, you know, and, but how can that be? I feel like at some point before all of this started, I had created this very scientific mindset that the consciousness is produced by the brain and the human experience happens in the brain. And basically when your body dies, then the person you are gets dissolved with it. and. Even though I had been very devoted as a Catholic uh, growing up as a teenager, I feel like when I went to university, I completely, you know, I still had spirituality, but I had a more logically inclined kind of thinking. And right now I still don't practice any religion, but I do, I do have spiritual beliefs. I don't want to get into religion in this channel either because I don't want to alienate anybody. We're going to talk about spirituality, but without a religious context. Of course, you can apply the religious context context according to what you believe. But I don't think following a religion is necessary to have a spiritual practice. If you hear a sound, I just cut myself. I just made myself an iced coffee. As I was saying, I don't think that is necessary to have religious practice, to have a spiritual practice. But we're not gonna talk about that. I keep going on tangents. Um, but yes, um, it is when I started researching and really considering and really examining myself, my experience and the human experience as a whole, that I started my healing. And I, I mentioned the restaurant event with my sisters and my then sister's boyfriend. That I mentioned it because it was that night that I really started calming down and examining reality. I felt, you know, I'm so small in this universe. I'm basically, you know, insignificant. But all of us paint a larger picture. You know, all of us, I feel we have a function within this world. And everything is so perfect. And I started thinking then there has got to be some sort of reason why it is like this. And I came to my own conclusions even before I came across what would become eventually like the means to, to truly finally heal from what I was experiencing. And which was the discovery of NDEs. Um, I reached a conclusion by myself thinking, you know, 
consciousness cannot possibly be produced by the brain and the reason I started believing this is that, you know, I kept having this urge to get out of my body. I wanted to to be out of my body because my body was no longer safe, because my body was going to die one day. <laughs> and as I mentioned earlier, I ran I suddenly stopped disidentifying with my my the contents of my humanity, of my, my mind with my physical body. And I just, you know, I came up I came to the conclusion that Consciousness, therefore, must be something that's outside the body and like it's processed by our brain as if the brain was an antenna and there are some scientists that actually have has, have proposed this line of thinking and that's what I, that's when I came across, you know, NDEs and all of these consciousness awareness research and I was like, you know, this resonates with what I have concluded by myself this really resonates with me um, when I read about NDEs and people's experiences, I really started to feel like this sense of calm. Like, I felt like their accounts, they have to be true because so many people all over the world have experienced the very same things. And therefore, you know, it doesn't matter their background, their religion, their wealth, their position in the world or life they have seen the same they have seen the same things and some people might interpret things uh, in the context of their religious practice of their religious practice and but when at the end of the day is basically everyone's having the same experience and i thought that was really fascinating and what i mentioned about the brain being sort of a conduit for consciousness there's a doctor his name he's an he's a retired cardiologist who experienced many of these through his patients. Who experienced many of these through his patients and he actually wrote wrote a book and went on I saw the mo the way I found out about him was through YouTube. He had a conference about his book. It's called The Doctor's called Pim Pim Bang Lomel and his book is called Consciousness Beyond Life. And I highly recommend anyone, especially somebody who's struggling, going through a spiritual awakening or going to going through grief or, you know, having an existential crisis, if you want to call it like that. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you read this book or at least watch um, Dr. Pim Van Lommel's um, conference on YouTube. His conference is very complete. Um, I feel like if you watch his conference, you basically watch a summary of the book. The book has some more experiences than the ones he talks about in his conference, but his conference is very complete. So if you watch his conference, basically is as good as having read the book, uh, in my opinion. Um, well, Dr. Pim Van Lommel believes that the brain is basically a means to process consciousness and that consciousness is something that is out probably you know in the universe out there and you know this life force that we have it, consciousness is something that comes from somewhere else and after reading about NDEs after ha having come to my own conclusions and reading Dr. Pim Van Lommel's conclusions. I actually read another book around the time. No, I actually read this book years later, but I found out about it around that time. It's called Bio The Theory of Biocentrism, and the doctor who wrote it is, um, his name is Robert Lanza. I thought the book was a little tiresome to read, but um, what he exposes in the book, what he talks about in the book is actually really interesting and is about how life is actually what is producing reality. You know, there has got to be a conscious observer for reality to behave as it is. So, and this, that has a very solid scientific basis. I'm not gonna get into quantum theory here, but you can get, you can check out certain studies that have been done. I'm gonna link one in the description down below because right now I couldn't mention it. It's, I think it's split, split atom theory or something like that. You know, how when the atoms behave differently depending on whether or not there's a conscious observer. And I, thought, I think that's actually really fascinating. 
in further proofs of these theories about awareness and consciousness and reality and yeah i highly recommend you read about that but basically that's how my spiritual awakening went it was an extremely difficult extremely intense devastating time in which my whole person my beliefs everything was deconstructed i couldn't even listen to music by the way there was only a very specific type of music that i could listen to those days but it's like i couldn't process i couldn't stomach the music that I would usually normally love and listen to. I remember one afternoon I was trying to listen to Epica, which is one of my favorite bands, and I just could, I felt even sort of nauseated and overwhelmed to listen to it. I could only listen to, to certain soft kind of music, especially spiritual music. More specifically, you know, I only had, back then I only had a PSP, a portable PlayStation, to listen to music. This is 2013, what I'm talking about. And I wouldn't listen to music on my phone. I had, I only had a PSP. And I had a set amount of songs in that PSP in a, in a little um, memory card or SD card. And I, there was this song by the, the group called Era that it was kind of like the only song I could listen to. I'm not even kidding. The song is called Misere Mani. And like that was the only song I could listen to without getting overwhelmed because everything was just completely overwhelming. I was, I was, you know, deconstructed. I feel like the person I was before I went to bed that night in 2013, it's not like she's gone. She's still here in me. But the thing is that I changed completely and my spirituality is very different. I feel like I have a very solid concept of what my spirituality is right now. I still have, you know, I grew up as a Christian Catholic, so I still have a connection to Christ as a figure of, of wisdom and everything. And I still have a connection to Mary and everything, but I don't view, I don't view these figures as I used to when I was actively Catholic and you don't have to agree with me about anything obviously I'm just sharing my experience and I still integrate these parts by the way even going to church when I was going through this really helped me because I was surrounded by people who were seeking out solace in in, in Christ you know in, in spirit in their spirituality I feel like the person that I was she changed completely after that night and it was kind of like my spirit saying inside of me, my soul saying, hey, hello, I'm here, you know, like stop identifying with the flesh because the flesh is only temporary. I feel like our soul, it just manifests in this temporary physical realm to have experiences that are impossible as a non-corporeal being. For example, this iced coffee that I'm holding right here, like, I could probably see it and have a sense of it in a non-corporeal form, but you know, being able to properly taste it and like feel the cold in my tongue and the taste, the sweet taste. And I believe we could experience music and colors and everything in the other realm, obviously, but could we feel the vibrations? You know, even deaf people can experience music. Through the, vib through the vibrations. I'm here to create, to create art, to create beautiful things, to create experiences. And that's what our soul wants to have in this realm. And everything, you know, in the context of eternity or being in a timeless realm. I believe eternity and timelessness are not the same thing, by the way. Um, and we come from a timeless place. And I feel like in the context of being in this timeless realm a lifetime of say a hundred years on this earth is so ephemeral so small if you read my poetry i mean you probably found me through my poetry here you know that i write about this a lot and it's because i'm i'm really fascinated about these topics and I feel like we come into this world to experience all of these things and it's so so it goes by so fast in that in that from that perspective. So yeah, 
That experience really taught me to cherish my time on this earth. I, I became completely aware of the fact that we're not gonna be here forever on this realm. I became aware of, of my own mortality. I feel like I had a concept of it before, but if it wasn't for that experience, after that moment, it was like an existential sort of crisis. I, after examining my existence, my existence on this plane and everything that went down that I just said um, I really became aware of my mortality and I feel like you know I have to cherish every moment because sometimes we get caught up in such tiny things like for example I had a bad experience recently and I went for days just being sad and angry that this happened as I just said like these are things that are so in the context of the universe and everything and the reality of our soul this this experience is nothing is eternal so focusing so much on the negative experiences is not worth it we need to really cherish life and uh, try to experience all the beautiful things that our life is giving us and create we have to do the things that we came to this world to do I believe there's people who came to this world to, to be good at math and sciences. There's people who came into this world to be good at research and, you know, languages and science and art and everything. And I just feel like we should, we should focus our energy on those things because I feel like that's what our soul wanted us to do when we manifested in this place and moment in time. So yes, that was my experience going through what I call now a spiritual awakening. I used to call this like my big nervous breakdown of 2013, you know. <laughs> but now I call it my spiritual awakening because it, it just shifted everything inside of me. And it was an extremely painful and difficult and long process, but I got through it. And if you're going through it right now, I really want you to know that you're gonna, like this is only temporary, just to breathe and do your own research try to focus your mind on on answering the questions that it so desperately needs and you know focus on finding comfort for yourself through this time because i know it's very difficult um i don't know if other people have had blissful experiences when they sort of awakened but my experience was so far from blissful and if you're going through it right now, just know that you're not alone and this is temporary, it's all going to pass and take a lot of care of yourself. Be mindful of your own comfort and finding your own answers. So this is it for this video. I hope something of what I said resonated with you and could help you, especially if you're going through it right now. So this is it for this video. I hope you liked it and if you did, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel and commenting and doing all those things because that really helps boost the channel. Right now I'm at 58 subscribers. <laughs> it would be great if I could get to 100 this year, like who knows. Thanks a lot for listening to my experience and I will see you in my next one. Bye! homemade ice caramel macchiato <laughs> my favorite